Hi, Julie Jones from SSB Performance, Smarter, Stronger, Better Mindset Training, here with this week's Mindset Made Simple Tip of the Week, brought to you by Game Day Sportswear. Visit shopgameday.net for all of your sporting goods needs, shirts, hats, water bottles, you name it. Gina and her staff can help you out there. This week, we are talking about choosing one thought over another. I've talked about it numerous times, but tomorrow I get the opportunity to talk to the NCATA. That is a National Collegiate Acrobat and Tumbling Association. If you haven't heard of acro, which is an emerging sport in the NCAA, there are now over 50 teams, maybe over 60 now. It's growing by leaps and bounds, and lots of leaps and bounds by these amazing athletes take place in the sport. You, there's a link in this tip for you to go and check out this sport. It's amazing. It's a cross between gymnastics and uh, spirit, but it's these athletes are incredible. The things that they do, the precision that it takes. If there is a mental sport out there, this is it. And I'm simplifying by saying the cross that I made, but these are amazing athletes. They do things that I could never imagine doing, so I'm even more, more impressed with it. But I'm also impressed with the coaching association and all the coaches in the sport. They're all so eager to grow and learn and make this a, this sport a great opportunity for all the young female athletes out there that aspire to play at the NCAA level. So, in thinking about tomorrow and what I'm going to present to this group of coaches, it's really hard to narrow down to take my hour. What am I going to put in there? So I thought, well, let's just start at the beginning. And we know that everything starts, so the beginning is our thoughts. Everything starts with a thought or a message from our brain to the rest of our body. And the question is whether or not we can pay attention to the thoughts that help us or focus on the thoughts that are unhelpful. But the cool part is that our power comes from this. We all at all times have the ability to choose one thought over another. Way easier said than done. Way easier said than done. Thinking about how grateful I was yesterday to be able to take time and have, have the, the means to go get a pedicure, that is a helpful thought. I'm very excited. I was excited to go to my cousin's daughter's wedding. My toes needed some work. Grateful. In that same time, I'm sitting there wasting the massage part, my favorite part. So I'm not all about getting pedicures, quite honestly. My former assistant had to force me two years ago. I'm thinking, gosh, I wish he'd rub my feet harder. I wish that he would rub my calves harder. And in the meantime, I'm missing the experience. Now, this is a really goofy example, but we are constantly allowing thoughts to come into our mind that are not helpful. They don't help us get information. They don't help us perform at our best. They don't help us experience what's right in front of us because we're either thinking too far ahead or we're thinking too far behind. And that is not helpful. So what do we do? How do we choose one thought over the other? That is the question. There's a book called Getting the Neutral, Trevor Moad. Here it is right now. Great book. Follow up to is It Takes What It Takes, which is another uh, book that I mentioned in this tip. But we don't control our thoughts. Our thoughts come. Our thoughts go. If we controlled our thoughts, we would have to be thinking about what we're about to think about. And we can't do that. It's like asking who's on first. But the question is, how do we... Choose one thought of it. Well, it's a, it is a choice. It's a deliberate choice. We have to assess what's in our mind and whether or not it's helpful to what we're doing right now. And if we have to ask that question, it's almost asked and answered. Is this thought helping me? Is it? If it's not, what do I do? It's not about suppressing thought. Suppressing thoughts is like taking a beach ball and trying to hold it down underneath the water. You can do that until you get tired of it, and then as soon as you let it up, what happens? It explodes, and it goes way up into the air. And that's exactly what happens when we try to suppress our thoughts. It's not about pretending that we don't have these thoughts. It's not about pretending that we always think great things. It's not about pretending that everything's great and rosy, because it's not always great and rosy, and we know that. It's not about suppressing our thoughts, because when we do, they bounce back with more energy than they started with. It is about our ability to introduce a new thought, to shift to neutral. 
to downshift. Think about the act of shifting your car. And you put it into neutral, and what happens? You sort of just pause for a second. And this pause allows us, according to Moad, or in, and other researchers who talk about either negative thinking or positive thinking or the difference between both or where we really need to be, which is sort of in the middle, and neutral thinking. This neutral thinking or this neutral position allows us to slow things down and calm things down and figure out what's important now. We talk about that question a lot as well. What's important now? What, what does this experience or this situation demand of me? to be my best. I mean, heck, I can ruin a concert, right? I'm watching a concert, my favorite artist, Melissa Etheridge. She's up there singing, I'm thinking, is she gonna play this song? Or I wonder how long she's going to sing tonight. Or gosh, I hope this is on the set list. And I think, you know, am I singing too loud for the person? I'm not even listening to the darn concert because my thoughts are going all over the place. What does this situation right now demand of me? It demands that I sit back and enjoy my favorite artist. Thinking about what could go wrong, thinking about how I can't get to things, how I can't do this or can't do that, or what happened in the past, or what might happen in the future, probably not useful to enjoy, to learn, to scan and gather information so that we can act on what's important now. It's like Stephen Covey said in, in his Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. It's about keeping the main thing the main thing, and it's really, really hard to do. Really hard to do. The question, again, is how do we downshift? A simple question. What's important now? Noticing, assessing. Is this thought helping me? There's a thought in my head. This thought could be the predominant thought if I allow it to stay there. I don't control them, but I can manage them. How am I going to manage it to make myself better in this moment right now? Negative thinking keeps us away from, I'm sorry, neutral thinking. I'm sorry. Neutral thinking shifts us from negative thinking. Neutral thinking also shifts us away from what Moad calls toxic Positivity. Toxic positivity is where we think we, we, we don't acknowledge reality or we think, oh, we've got to feel this way. We've got to be happy. We've got to be hopeful. But this neutral thinking gives us useful hope. Putting steps together, one step at a time, taking the right action. When we are more in control, we have a tendency to choose better behaviors. And neutral thinking, downshifting, or just shifting, it's not even, even a downshift all the time, just shifting into neutral position, allowing us to pause and introduce a new thought can be really, really helpful. Neutral thinking allows us to take the lessons we've learned from the past and still understanding that the past, whether it was good or bad, does not predict the future necessarily because it's our actions in the future, in this current moment, that predict what's going to happen next. Not what happened a long time ago. We can gather information from that and then decide how to use it. That is neutral thinking. I was playing pool with my son last week on vacation and he was just acknowledging the fact that, oh, this is a long shot. That is neutral thinking. Yes, it was a long shot all the way down the table. And I'll be darned if he didn't make half of them. I was un unbelievably impressed. But it was neutral thinking. It is what it is. It wasn't, oh my gosh, that's a really long shot. What if I do this? What if I do that? What? No, it was, this is a long shot. And if I hit it right here and it hits it right there, the chances are it might go into that hole. That's pretty neutral thinking. So whether we're pretending that everything's great or we're just really stinking thinking, we've done that, right? This neutral thinking helps us be where we need to be to ask what's important now or what does this situation demand of me or how can I get to the place where I can gather information, where I, where I can be grateful, where I can enjoy, where, where I can relate, where I can be where my feet are. That's choosing one thought over another. This thought comes in my head. It's not helping me. If I'm thinking about what you're going to think about this video right now, I won't be able to talk about what's on my agenda for these seven or eight minutes. 
I have to think about what my job is right now to get information to you so that then you can think about whatever you think about because I can't control that anyway. So, Moad says, and it takes what it takes. Negative, cynical thinking does not make you more realistic. It just makes you negative and cynical. Bias thinking doesn't help you either. That's that toxic positivity. We need to steer clear of our feelings and make an honest assessment of each situation we face. Don't worry about what you feel. Rely on what you know. Thoughts aren't facts. Feelings aren't facts. Facts are facts. And the fact is this, that we always get to choose. I'm not good at it either all the time, but I did notice, at least, that when the guy was rubbing my feet, I mean, a guy's rubbing my feet, what are you complaining about, for goodness sakes, right? The bottom line is, whether we're thrown off by competition, whether we're thrown off by worry or anxiety or frustration or excitement or whatever it is, being able to choose one thought over the other to keep us focused on what's important now is going to help us play, prepare, perform, have a conversation, enjoy, be grateful, notice what's around us because we're present. And that is going to help us perform and live better. So that's tip number one in my three tips that I'm going to talk about with my coaches tomorrow. Join me next week for tip number two and then the next week for tip number three. And we're coming up on three years of tips. So we've got to find a good one for that. But thanks for listening. If I can help you or your team in any way, please contact me at juliej at ssbperformance.com. And until next week, manage the moments, shift into neutral, and choose one thought over another, the one that's going to help you. Have a great week.